In the latest plan to survive the apocalypse, we have the growing of crops while huge rabbits turned action heroes try to smoke you. Today we'll go deeper into the mechanics that make atomic crops so great. I'm Epark from Minigame Guides and today I present to you the complete guide for atomic crops. The entire idea behind atomic crops is that you explore during the day and protect your crops during the night. You can basically split for that reason the game into two parts. The farming part where you go over the mechanics and some tricks on how to tend to your crops and the violent part that is all about killing bosses and getting new skills. Sounds good? Let's get started with the peaceful part first. If you want just one huge tip for this game, it's a very simple one. The more money you have, the easier the game gets. Now in exchange for harvesting crops, you get in-game currency cashews. After surviving a night, you can spend it in a town. But first we need to go over the basics behind farming. To grow crops, you need to till the ground, plant the seeds, water it till fully grown, and then you can harvest it. It's simple enough. But the first big thing to talk about are the seeds. Now first off, there are several tiers of crops. The bronze tier takes less time to grow, but it's less valuable. And the higher the tier, the more money they'll take, but the bigger the cash return will be. Besides that, there are also mainly two kinds of seeds, wet and dry sands. Now there are four biomes that surround the farm, being desert, plains, jungle and tundra. The desert and tundra offer dry seeds which require less water to grow and will be easier at the start when you don't have many skills or animals yet. The jungle and the plain deliver wet seeds which require a lot more water, so they are more hands-on. When you kill enemies, they'll sometimes drop fertilizer. Now this is mainly for creating mega crops. Now basically if you plant 4 crops of the same time in a 2x2 space and give them enough fertilizer, they'll merge together into one mega crop. Now these are worth more cashews than their original parts separate, so if possible it's always worth doing this since it makes quite a difference, especially with the special crops. In my opinion there are 5 special crops that are a little bit different. First off we have the trees which take up 4 spaces but they won't be removed when you harvest their fruit. They take up a lot of space and I wouldn't plant them during your first nights when you don't have much room to work with, but later on when you have more space, go ahead. Next up we have the roses, now these give you basically a special currency called the roses that are used to purchase specific things in town. Now they are very important and should always have a high priority and they will can also merge into one big crop without the need of fertilizer. A big rose will give you 5 roses instead of you know 4 separate roses so it's always advised to save up until you have at least 4 seeds to get the most out of them. Then we have the health beads which basically replenish your health, they require a substantial amount of fertilizer to merge into a big crop and harvesting them replenishes your life. Now harvesting them when full life will also increase your max health. Basically harvesting 3 heart beads while having full health will give you 1 extra health point. Pumpkins aren't that valuable but they rather have the special effect to destroy enemy bullets when you're harvesting them. And then we have the sunflowers which are very important because they will immediately sprout once planted and then you have the very little time to feed them fertilizer up to about a maximum of 50 pieces and each fertilizer will give you about 6 cashews for a small and 30 cashews for a big flower. To help you with tending to the farm you can employ animals if you find them during it exploring at least. Pigs will till the soil and sometimes expand the farmable area. Cows will water your crops and in my opinion are one of the best farm animals to have as this is always a point I am struggling at. Chickens eat waste fast and lay eggs that you can sell for a little bit of cash and bees will double a crop's growth rate. Now each of these farm animals there have also some upgraded versions. For example, the hawk will charge at enemies, steal soils and expands farmable area. The grass-fed cows will water crops more efficiently than the normal kind. Turkeys remove weeds and lays eggs, also pretty much a lot more efficient. And then we have the hummingbird, which doubles the crop growth in an area instead of one specific crop per time. When you encounter enemy camps with these animals, you need to always pick between two options. If you want my advice, I would always go for the cow and the pig first, as they can help you take care of the crops, leaving you more time to focus on defending the crops during the night. Now, you need to have a lot of chickens to actually help you in a major way with the weeds. I found the best way to take a little time of each day to spend on weeding. It's not very fun, but it will make them a lot less annoying and become really necessary closer to the end game when they start turning into weed monsters. 
Now there are multiple upgrades that can help you remove weeds even faster. If you find one of these, you may also choose to spend a little bit extra time on weeding as weeds will also give you a little bit of money. Another tool that I'd like to quickly go over are the tractors. Now you can only hold one at any time and they need to charge for each usage. Now there are some skills that will allow you to hold multiple tractors, make them charge faster or have two charges instead of one. But let's just quickly go over all the kinds of tractors. The tunneler tractor creates a tunnel back to your farm or breaks the crust if already on the farm. Now it's handy if you need to get back to the base quickly and steadily expand your farm. Now if I have a lot of pigs, pickaxes or tremor scrolls, I tend to drop this for one of the tractors that help me manage the enemy waves. The wood chipper tractor is great for clearing out camps and enemy waves while turning them into fertilizer. It's a good emergency button in case things become a little bit too much for you. The sprinkler tractor serves mainly to water all crops in the area and it may also cause crops and trees to drop a seed. Now it's a great tractor to have early on but it becomes less interesting as you find cows and other ways to water your crops. The Wacker tractor is excellent for getting rid of weeds and getting a lot of seeds but if you have a well kept lawn and a lot of chickens or turkeys you may not find this as useful. The Megaton tractor is an all purpose nuke. Now it instantly grows crops, slaughters enemies, obliterates weeds, expands farmland and makes farmers smile. It's the best one that you can get, period. Not even a discussion, nothing comes close. Now you can also find while exploring the scrolls that basically help you do things faster, like fertilizing, watering and sowing seeds in random patterns. They are very valuable when in tight situations, where you can barely keep up with the onslaught to focus on, then you can just use one of your scrolls to alleviate the farming duties, and you can hold as many as you want at any time, so just keep them with you until that time is there. When the night is over, the helicopter will come get you and he will take you to the town. So let's talk about that a little bit more and everything that it has to offer. Now as you arrive at the town, above you you will find the weapon vendor. You should always try to at least be able to buy a gun every day as the old one breaks down after each night. Unless you have an upgrade of course. Now later on you will need to upgrade these weapons when you have bigger, badder enemy waves coming your way. The best guns in my opinion are the spot rifle which basically operates as an assault rifle. The Catling gun has great damage output but needs to cool down after a bit. And lastly we got our grenade launcher the biodegrader which is awesome for some much needed area damage. To the left we have a vendor who sells all kinds of random items like seeds, turrets and all that kind of stuff. And furthermore we have also there a vendor who sells bridge parts that can give you access to more difficult areas later on. All the way to the right side we have each day two of the five possible spouses that you can give them some roses for reward. Now these rewards basically can range from upgrades to items like turrets or hard seats. Now each time you buy something from the same person the relationship improves. After a while you can marry one of them and get them to join you during your adventures. Now each of them have a specific skill, I'm not saying you should really focus on getting one specifically but I wouldn't let it influence your choice too much. Naturally, you can only get one spouse unless you have the skill Polygamy. Now after every third night after you defeated the seasonal boss, you get access to the back part of the town. During something called a seasonal festival, the mayor will give you a rating from 1 to 10 based on the total value of the crops you harvested the last three nights. Now the higher the rating, the more rewards you get. Going from bridge parts to hard seeds to new skills. During this time you can also visit a vendor that sells all kinds of things in exchange for roses and the vendor that sells tractors for cash. Now, combat is very simple in this game. The most important part is to take as little damage as possible. Even with the heartbeat mechanics, health is very hard to gain. Now, over time you'll learn all the specific firing patterns the enemies have and this will make a lot of things easier. Now, during the day you should also be exploring the surrounding areas as much as you can. Now in the camps you won't encounter just animals, scrolls and seeds. You can also get turrets and scarecrows that will help you deal with the enemy waves during the night. Now I don't use scarecrows that much but the turrets make a lot of difference and help with not only defeating regular enemies but also the bosses. But there are various items that will also make the turrets a lot better going from increased damage to the ability to water your crops. I do want to strongly recommend a specific order to tackle the zones. 
First go left to the desert. This and the eastern zone are both the easiest zones, but the desert has all the dry seeds that require less water. Now this makes it the ideal zone to start off with. Since by the time you've cleared it, you may already have found the cow or rain squirrels. And after the desert is done, you can go east to the plains, grassy area. When this zone has been completely cleared, you should already have killed a boss and gotten a bridge part from the mayor. Prepare the bridge to either the south or the north. The tundra in the north has dry seeds, the jungle in the south has wet seeds. If you're still struggling to water all your crops, you may want to go to the north first. Now if you need bridge parts at any time, you don't forget you can buy them in town. When all four of these zones are cleared, you can repair the bridge on the far side of east or west. And behind there, the enemies become a lot more challenging and you should be upgrading your weapons every chance you get. Now once the far parts of the east and west are done, go to the far zone of the two remaining biomes. So to summarize it, basically just first go west when you start out, then go east, and then you can choose between either north or south. Deal with all those forest zones first, and then you go back to the west or the east, clear those far zones first, and then you can tackle the north and the south far zones later on, because those are the most difficult. Now I won't go over all these zones specifically, but the major two tips that I want to give during exploring is, while you're clearing out a camp, sometimes some enemies that you need to kill to get the rewards from that specific camp, they can run away and then you just need to find the specific enemies who have a pink flag right above their head. That means that they are tied to unlocking that specific camp. You can always come back later, so if you, can, if you want to leave back to your farm because it's night, then you can always just come back and there will only be the remaining enemies that you didn't manage to kill last time. And next to that you also have in each zone a golden larva and if you loot it, it will go sprout a flower that is protected by a very unique enemy. He's not really tough but he just has some different mechanics as he will just try to jump on top of you. If you manage to kill him you will get some fertilizer and a skill. And my last and final tip, in the top right corner you have a calendar. Now if you are in town and the second day is marked with an X, you really really want to buy a gun. Because in the coming night a boss will attack your crops and you don't want to take them on with your little pea shooter. Those were all the mechanics and tips that I couldn't come up with that I wanted to cover in this guide. Now if you think that I missed something or do you have any more questions, please let me know in the comments down below. And if you found this guide useful, be sure to give it a video a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this one, consider subscribing. We publish three guides like this one every week and we would love to get your input in our open questions and polls on the community page. I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.